morning. Oh, Garrett, how are you doing? Great to see you. Great to see you. Great to see you. Right? Yes, you want to be on live? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, no, stay inside the camera. Okay, thank you. Amazing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Truly amazing. Who had it met I think that's the Belgium kid. No, it's another one. <laughs> Very good. So we'll see you this afternoon. Yes, that's good. Where are you off to today? Um, to Beatitudes mm -hmm. and also to the... Uh, the Capernaum. Capernaum, St. Yeah. Peter's Fish, the whole... Okay, excellent. The whole normal story. Yes. Excellent, excellent, Garrett. And how many people are with you? Uh, 22. Fantastic. From Texas? No. All over the United States. So All over the United Chicago, States. New York, Texas. Fantastic. Let's be in touch just in case I have, because I have some things this afternoon, but just to confirm. Okay. Thank okay. you, Bob. Very good. Go God bless you. So I just, he want to have a tour for his people. They arrived yesterday. And he didn't want to be on camera. Some people like to be on camera, other people prefer not to be on camera. These people are, uh, this profile is, they can't be recognized, so I think that's okay. Nowadays we need to ask permission. I guess now it is means it's basic because we have abilities to televise. Imagine when I was a child, it was a mystery to have television. It was such an amazing thing. But now everybody can televise. Isn't that amazing? It's really had a huge development for humanity that you can publish everything from everywhere at any time. <laughs> I love today's text from Isaiah. It's also about that difference before the human person, before the will of others. That incredible respect that's due to every person, no matter how broken. I'm just noticing Mount Hermon up there, but we've seen it before, so it's not clear enough to take time for it now. Listen to this text in terms of human dignity. And think of it being spoken by the person who could really do anything at will, even raise the dead calm the stormy sea, walk on water. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one, with whom I am pleased, upon whom I put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations. Some people try to do that with tanks and guns and armies. But the next line is not crying out, not shouting. It's not by big protest. Sometimes the prophets did that, and sometimes there's a place for that. Not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. In fact, Jesus' behavior was one of great discretion. And he even stayed away from the crowds and then they came to seek him. Maybe John the Baptist had a different style, calling out Herod for his sins. Once I was with the priest who did amazing chart and good for literally millions of people. He was from Belgium. And he wanted me to become a bit involved in his work. This is back in the late 80s. And he was rather vocal about 
some major injustices worldwide. And not everybody applauded that approach, to say the least. And I didn't think that was what I should be doing. And so I mentioned that to him. And he understood, and he looked at me. He was probably almost 80 years of age. Or I imagine he was in his high 70s at that time. Maybe already turned 80. And he looked at me with a gentleness and he said, but there is a place for a prophetic voice. So, of course, sometimes somebody has to cry out. But the style of approach of Jesus is much more in keeping with this text of Isaiah. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break. A bruised reed, you know, these little plants. And it's a bit beaten down and you give it one final kick. That's a bit of a destructive instinct in us. A bruised reed he shall not break. And a smoldering wick he shall not quench. Many times there are smoldering wicks here from the campfires. And these images have been a great motivation for so many followers of Jesus. They, when this was being read in the early church, in a way Jesus was being recognized, they were recognizing that this is his style, <clears throat> his way, his approach. And that gentleness and tenderness became a hallmark of so much outreach to the broken, the sluggish, the cold-hearted, the fainting, and we always need to relearn that because we can also become hard. We can want to dominate. We can want to impose. Isn't that what parents do with little children? There's a great gentleness and mercy and tenderness before the person of the child. A bruised reed he shall not break and a smoldering wick he shall not quench. Parents breathe life in, they nurture life, they fan the flames of life, they fan that fire back into flame. <clears throat> Think of all the work parents do with an addicted child to get them back into a healthy lifestyle. And as much as Jesus suffered the intense horrors of the passion of the crucifixion, of the scourging, the crowning with thorns, the mockery, that was not his style toward others. He took it and bore it, but he didn't give that back. Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. And those who were crucifying could say, truly, this was the Son of God. bruised reed he shall not break and a smoldering wick he shall not quench until he establishes justice on the earth the coastlands will wait for his teaching This text of Isaiah is so beautiful, it continues going on. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. It's amazing how the victory of justice could happen through the passion, death, and resurrection. Completely unexpected way. To 
to establish justice by bearing the injustice for a moment. And doesn't that happen in our lives? And somebody, instead of replying in anger, just waits humbly, patiently, and the aggressive tones of the others subside a little bit. Because that humility also speaks to the conscience and heart of the aggressor. In family relationships, at work, sometimes it's hard to convince the political order of this methodology, of this approach, the big challenge of transforming society. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. It's an extraordinary text of literature. Just as a text, appreciate it, savor it. And then it's an extraordinary text in terms of its transformative power. There's a whole drama in it. It's dramatic. And it's actually charted the course of history in the lives of millions who chose to live this way. In that sense as well, we see how the Word of God is light. A light for the nations. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? When evildoers come at me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies themselves stumble and fall. This is Psalm 27. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. That's a person that's really anchored in prayer. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. And that's the name of a book of eschatology speaking about the life and the resurrection, the land of the living, the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. That patience, that strength of a person who takes abuse, who takes mockery, who takes insult and doesn't react. They're the stronger person, stout-hearted, courage. The logic of the world is the stronger person is the one who strikes back and takes revenge tenfold and bombs and obliterates and wipes out enemies. But here is about the turning of the hearts of the enemies into friends. Oh, there we have the reeds. Look at a bruised reed he will not bend. These are pretty broken reeds. So they have this reed here that's healing over. These are all reeds. Look okay, at a bruised reed, he will not bend. I'm doing it in contra light so you can't see very well. Let me find another spot. There's a, a bent over reed. A bruised reed, he will not bend. I'll have to find a nicer one for the Instagram post now. And then we have 
Jesus with Lazarus having a meal with Lazarus and Martha and Mary and the anointing with oil, the generosity. There's another stout-hearted approach to be generous. Those are the strong people, the ones who are generous. I'm not sure if it's the Jewish people who say that a person's riches are measured by their generosity. Not by how much they have in the bank, but how much they give away. And that's why the richness of that lady with the widow's might, how much she gave away. And then you have the mean heart with always judging others. So people, let's be nourished this week by the scriptures as we unlock the extraordinary treasures that are present in the whole walk of these days. Here we have more reeds with this heavy cotton-like head. Another fallen over reed. Do you think that's a good one there for the Instagram post? A bruised reed he will not break. People, God bless you. See you later, alligators. May you be blessed in this holy week.